What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here jumping in on this beautiful Friday evening, July 23rd, 2021 is the date this evening, about 7.50 p.m. here in California, Northern California that is, uh, where fires are raging nonstop and magically starting left and right. So it is what it is, right? 4.0, the latest quake on the globe down here around the South America region, looks like around the Chile area. Uh, just prior to that, just as I was about to hit the uh, start button, had some movement out here around the Mediterranean Sea with a 5.0. All this activity comes after a pretty large earthquake striking the Philippines area, a 6.7 magnitude quake right there on the globe, south, about south, southwest of Manila, Philippines area. Uh, that was quickly followed up by a 5.8 aftershock. We'll go ahead and check out a little bit more specific details of what's going on out here around the globe. Uh, with the latest flat scale model for the flat scale uh, earth earthers out there, I should say, right? Uh, I don't know. I've been up in the plains quite a few times there. It kind of looks a little, little curvy. All right, enough of that. <laughs> 5.0 magnitude quake striking around the Greece area, out around the Mediterranean Sea region at about 7.5 kilometers. That just happened just a short time ago. And uh, looks like uh, activity ramping up, I mean, all over the globe since the 6.7 struck in the Philippine uh, Islands area. You can see that. And this activity right here, very deep movement, 112 kilometers for that 6.7. Uh, and then about, looks like about 10 minutes later, we had a 5.8 aftershock, even deeper. Okay, I've, uh, if you've been watching my update videos, you've been kind of probably hearing me say Japan, Japan northward for the next major quake, the next mega quake. And this kind of, it, it kind of rings true. Uh, it, it's still kind of standing very strong. I believe um, that, uh, I honestly believe that we're looking at a potential here, uh, roughly around this area. We're gonna draw this line right here. See where that line is, plate boundary? Right around the Japan Trench northward into this point right here. I don't, uh, don't, I don't forecast earthquakes, but I've been looking at this area for quite a while and the lack of movement, the lack of major movement along this plate boundary, because it is a major plate boundary. And if you look at historical past earthquake activity, we should be seeing some major movement here and we're not. It's, it's holding up and it's been that way for a couple months. So therefore I believe this area is looking at the next uh, potential for a mega quake 8.0 or greater in this area. And until then, um, West Coast, I believe is also under the gun. It seems as though, and there's been scientific studies since the uh, nine pointer that struck uh, the Japan region years ago, 2011. Um, I said it kind of relieved pressure out here along the West Coast and, and it, it makes sense. Uh, if you look at uh, the westward movement of the Pacific Plate, kind of relieves pressure out here um, along the uh, northern, uh, northern California coastline, San Andreas Fault area. But this area right here, um, with the lack of activity, I'm talking lack of activity, there was major movement down south here, major movement up here along Solomon Islands over the past few months, uh, major movement around Taiwan. Uh, a few weeks ago, and now this large scale movement around Philippines, deep movement with the lack of earthquake activity up here still. Something is building up very dramatically here, and I think we're gonna see that take part here pretty soon. I could point anywhere on the map and say, yes, yeah, um, um, South America, Australia, New Zealand, Iceland, Greenland, wherever. But I honestly think that the West Coast is on target. We've seen a lot of earthquake movement along the West Coast. And that's due to the fact that we're not seeing that adjustment over here along the, nor uh, the uh, wet Northwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And I think, honestly, um, we are, there. You can, you can mark an X right here, right there. Those are my two spots. One or the other is gonna give um, pretty soon. Not forecasting, I'm just doing what I see for observations. There, there should be way more movement here in this area of the plate uh, than we've seen over the past few weeks, the past couple months, and we haven't seen it. Which large, with large scale deep movement to the south of there, uh, movement here to the north, uh, to the southeast over here, just this area is just not, it doesn't happen. It's not quiet like this. So 
we'll see, right? We will see. Not forecasting that. I'm just doing some observations, pointing out some interesting um, lack of activity. Just be on guard. That's all I'm going to say um, over here and over there. So what else we got going on here, folks, besides the Philippines area earthquake? Uh, let's go ahead and check out specifics real quick of that 6.7. And you can see, oh man, Philippines, beautiful area. Absolutely. I think that's, I keep saying I want to visit Ireland and Australia and South Africa. and But the Philippines, I would love to visit the Philippines. Beautiful area tropical type nature my type of, of environment but seismically active beyond belief when it comes to earthquake activity right there in that smack dab the star right there is in all of that uh, earthquake activity historically since about 1900 uh, and those are 4.5 and above so uh, and there has been some larger magnitudes around there 7.0 to 8.0 earthquake activity within this region um, so that's not out of the question. 6.7, pretty good sized quake, but nothing uh, when it comes to a 7 or an 8 magnitude in this area. Uh, and then, of course, the 5.8 struck. Um, shortly thereafter, we did see, uh, and we did see, notice this up here to the north, some deeper movement since these two earthquakes struck down here in the, in the uh, uh, Philippines area. So we're looking at increase, height and increase in pressure. I think this area is already under enough strain. Um, and with this activity down southwest of here, just adding to it. And this earthquake here kind of kind of just backs that up at 4.3 at 147 kilometer depth, uh, well below the Japan Trench. This area is ready to, uh, it, it's ripe is what I'm saying. It's pretty ripe. Um, what do we got here towards the Middle East area? Afghanistan seeing a little bit of movement, 4.3 into movement out there in China. Uh, Afghanistan looking pretty deep here, 206 kilometers below the desert mountains out there. And there is that 5.0 uh, right around Greece area. Um, seven kilometers for that earthquake, but up here you can see a little bit of deeper movement. Looks like a 4.4 at 263 kilometers. Um, very dynamic situation here when it comes to plate, uh, the uh, plate boundaries and the uh, the basic movement of the plates. I mean, when you, when you got horseshoes here and the horseshoes down there and mountains all over the place, uh, it tells you right there that there's some dynamics taking place there in the plate tectonic system. We did see up north here way earlier today. Let's see if the see if map can even go that far. Uh, the Greenland Sea, 5.5 at 10 kilometers. We don't see too many earthquakes up north. They do happen, uh, but we haven't seen any in, in quite a while. Last time we seen some movement up there, uh, we were looking at uh, some pretty heightened volcanic activity there in the Iceland area. So we'll have to kind of monitor that region for, for uh, further movement. Uh, also 4.5 striking a little bit further south of the Iceland area. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Go ahead and check out the South America area. Not a whole lot of movement. Only a 4.0 within the last hour. That's the, uh, I believe, the latest earthquake on the globe. At 115 kilometers below this trench here, the Peru-Chile Trench, a major subduction zone. In fact, the largest earthquake ever recorded took place here in this region here uh, near the Santiago, Chile area. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Guatemala looking pretty quiet up here off the coast. Some uh, some movement off the uh, coast of El Salvador into the uh, Middle America Trench. 58 kilometers down dip downstream for that 4.2. Uh, Puerto Rico looking somewhat quiet. We are watching some heightened activity over here towards the Puerto Rico Trench. A little migration, if you will, away from the southwest area that we normally look at down here in this area. But these two earthquakes along the Puerto Rico Trench, somewhat deep, 58, 90 kilometers for a pair of threes, uh, striking almost back to back there. Northern California, let's go ahead and pull up the all magnitudes map here. I mean, we got fires and all sorts of stuff going on. I just, I, I don't even want to get started on that again. Um, some movement off the coast, Northern California, the Cascadia. Uh, subduction zone area right there at the triple point mendocino triple point, point junction a 2.1 taking place at 18 kilometers and also a little bit further down dip downstream of this subduction zone even though it shows it right here on the map like on the land 
it is not at the surface but down dip here of the North American plate at 25 kilometers for a 2.7 striking uh, right around the Cascadia as we move northward not a whole lot of movement in fact this is the all magnitudes map and we see nothing zip zero nada in the Pacific Northwest kind of unusual for uh, earthquake activity in the all magnitudes department here normally we see something and right now there's nothing uh, a little bit of movement southeast of Mount Shasta of course this could be in play with all the trimmer that's taking place here I haven't looked at the trimmer map yet tonight uh, but I'm guessing that we're probably seeing some more in this region or at least southern Oregon area we'll check that out here in a little bit 7.2 kilometers for a 1.9 uh, north northeast of McLeod area coastal ranges also seeing some movement here about due west of me uh, near Alder what, what have we got there Alder Springs area 2.2 and a 2.4 these are pretty shallow earthquakes here but this could be uh, due to the fact that the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate is kind of uh, adding on to the stress upstream onto the uh, crest of the of the uh, North American plate uh, but we'll, we'll check that out in here in a second I'm, I'm kind of curious about the trimmer but uh, what do we got Orville Orville Thermalito area seen a 1.8 at 25 kilometers I'm kind of curious about this see if it's been reviewed it has not been reviewed yet so I can't say this is hundred percent certain because it's at automatic status but if it is uh, that's a very interesting as well just kind of goes with the other deep movement that's taken place throughout Northern California due to the subduction and the buildup of stress along the Cascadia subduction zone Uh, what do we got here? Bay Area is looking pretty quiet for now. Uh, the Antelope Valley area where that six-pointer struck about two weeks ago now. Seeing some uh, continued aftershock activity. That could continue for months, if not years, folks. Uh, looks like, uh, let's go ahead and check the all magnitudes. 3.1, or at least a 2.5 and above. 3.1 being the largest in that sequence of all these aftershocks there in the Antelope Valley uh, a little bit of slippage, a little bit of slippage, no doubt, along the San Andreas Fault Zone, the slipping section or the creeper section. Creeping, <laughs> creeper. Uh, Ridgecrest still seeing some activity two years later there in the uh, microquake range. And the Southern California looking, uh, kind of looking a little bit below average. When I look at these maps daily, I kind of compare the activity that I that I see on any given day and this is kind of a little bit below average for for uh, even microquake activity along the San Jacinto Fault area and areas west of the San Andreas Fault uh, including up here around the San uh, Clarita area looking pretty quiet uh, for this region as far as average earthquake activity goes salt and sea no movement uh, no swarming to report Yellowstone National Park according to the USGS there's nothing happening up there. Let's go ahead and zoom in to the Yellowstone seismograph overview. And you know what? They could be correct. The swarming has significant, significantly died out around the Lake Yellowstone area. But over here to the northwest, we have seen a little increase in its own individual swarming. It's a separate swarm from the Lake Yellowstone area. You can see all these earthquakes showing up significantly. Uh, but they're microquakes, uh, well below 2.0 of that 1.7 and probably below uh, for a lot of these quakes. Some of these shown up around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 up here to the, uh, the uh, a little bit further back in time. But definitely a, a good handful of quakes taking place in the Holmes Hill Maple Creek region of Yellowstone National Park. But uh, man, look at that lake view, zip zero. Man, okay, maybe a couple, maybe a couple right there. You can see those maybe a couple but they're dying off dramatically folks dying off trimmer what's going on in the trimmer department let's go ahead and check that out real quick Ooh. oh yeah check that out holy smokes okay so remember i was just talking about i haven't seen that this is the first time i've seen this map folks so we talked about the deep earthquake activity along the coast uh, along the cascadia uh, around oroville around uh, mcleod area this explains it and that is dramatic very dramatic um, what do we got 207 epicenters of trimmer at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone down dip downstream underneath 
underneath all this land about 25 to 35 kilometers folks we're seeing some movement and movement there alone um, we can go back the last few days and see that this area and little areas in southern oregon are about the only areas with trimmer so that adds to the stress upstream and the plate and and the bending of the crust if you will um towards the surface so that's kind of why we're still seeing some deeper movement but larger magnitudes than what these trimmers are kicking off so that's pretty significant stretching all the way down here almost to chico where i'm at here in chico california pretty crazy uh but the uh, the wanda fuca the subduction zone kind of ends right about there but when that thing blows or when it goes man chico and areas north whoo we're talking about a party well maybe not a party but complete devastation uh, and not good uh, a lot of shaking going on here in northern california uh, from a major rupture along the cascadia but uh, even a even a southern in rupture say 8.0 would uh, do some tremendous damage along the coast and uh, shake things up here but that's pretty impressive that's a lot of earthquake activity and that kind of coincides folks with what i'm talking about at the surface of northern california here let's go ahead and go back to the all magnitudes i just want to make sure i i you, you can almost see it. You can almost see it in, in your mind, if you will. A little arrow pointing down towards the Chico area. We've seen that deeper movement uh, around Oroville, right? Well off over here. I'm kind of agreeing with that. Even though it hasn't been reviewed yet, I'm kind of thinking that will be reviewed and stand its ground. Uh, but Petrolia up here, deep movement, 25 kilometers below surface. Uh, deeper movement up here around the McLeod area. I'm surprised we haven't seen anymore but with that continued trimmer with the continued trimmer i expect uh, some further earthquake activity not only at um potentially the surface uh, due to crystal cracking or uh, crystal quakes but also potentially and i've always said this uh, trimmer could build up and it is building up uh, further stress along the cascadia subduction zone so that's a, it's an important area to pay attention to when we're seeing trimmer like this uh, or on any given day. I'm hoping that I will be alive for when, the, uh, for when the big one does hit along the Cascadia so I can look back and kind of look at all my videos and my readings and my recordings and my graphs and look at what it was like prior to a mega uh, earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone. And therefore I can make a full report and hopefully um, that will be utilized in the future um, to hopefully prevent well you can't really prevent a major earthquake but hopefully prepare folks um, for you know a coming mega quake along the Cascadia it's been well over 320 years since the last mega quake out here uh, we haven't had any even a, a partial rupture of the Cascadia so it's building it's there uh, it's it's going to happen. That's a given, 100%. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. i got to finish up my barbecue. Got some chicken and some oysters, right? I'm always barbecuing every single time. I'm always barbecuing out here. That's just what I do, regardless if it's Monday night, Sunday night, Friday night, winter, summer, spring, fall. Um, that's how I cook my dinner. And I tell you what, it's going to come out pretty yummy, I think. <laughs> Have a good night, folks. Um, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there, everyone. I mean, uh, earthquake activity is, is kind of ramping up since that 6.7 in the Philippines area. Uh, movement east of the Rockies, pretty quiet. We haven't seen a renewed earthquake activity east of there, but things it seems as though when things pick up here to the west, they do kind of calm down here. Uh, they, they calm down in the eastern Pacific, but with the lack of major adjustment up here to the northwest um, i fully expect a return of movement here in the west coast region pretty soon all right folks have a good night stay safe and we will chat you another time peace out